Hello and welcome. I'm Bill Wake. Um, I'm back from a, a few months break here on Twitch, but uh, we're starting a new project. It's called Basie. And uh, the, the notion I have is I want to create a basic interpreter. And uh, once I've got that, at least to some level, I want to convert it into a compiler as, as a sort of refactoring. Um, I have one that somebody put together a while back and uh, I've not used it in, in anger. <laughs> so I'm going to try it and see where we end up. Uh, but first, we're going to have to do the basic interpreter, okay? And uh, so this goal, develop the basic interpreter, refactor it to a basic compiler. If you're not familiar with the, the language of interpreter, an interpreter is a program, um, that black box in the middle. And what it does is it takes a program as input, and, and then it basically runs the program um, step by step, and it manages the input and output that the program calls for. The difference, a compiler converts it into, um, well, another language or machine code or assembler code or something like that, and then runs it directly. The interpreter kind of goes piece by piece through the program and, and figures out what it should do at each point. It's usually easier to start writing an interpreter than a compiler, um, you know, and you get the benefit sooner because, uh, you know, it's less trouble to generate code and all that stuff. So uh, we'll, we'll go with that. All right, now inside, interpreters look a lot like compilers, at least the front half. So you've got the interpreter overall, it's, it's got the program text coming in, and then it does a phase we call lexical analysis, sometimes scanning or lexing, um, that, that basically turns the stream of text into a stream of tokens. And a token is sort of a, a meaningful unit in the programming language. So in basic, um, spaces aren't significant outside of strings. So you might strip out the spaces and then break it up into words like um, if or then or a number or so on. Those are tokens. Now, once you have the tokens, you do what we call syntax analysis or parsing, which is to basically analyze the tokens according to a grammar and build up a tree of nodes. And the nodes are things like um, maybe addition or multiplication or maybe an if statement or a go-to statement in basic whatever the, the language calls for. Given that tree of nodes, then you can use, um, uh, well, basically there's an interpreter pattern that Gang, Gang of Four Design Patterns book suggests, and this is on that lines. Um, the interpreter basically works node by node, and you know it, if it's an if statement, it says, oh, I gotta evaluate the condition. I'll, I'll go do the nodes that explain that. And then I either, you know, go here or go there. Um, and, okay, I'll simulate moving my program counter and or my line number and, and going around. And if it calls for input or output, it takes care of that, okay? Um, now, the difference with the compiler is kind of that, that last box, the interpretation, that would tend to be more, um, well, co code generation. There's usually also a semantic analysis phase in there. I kind of blurred that. Maybe I should have put that box in, you know, kind of syntax analysis builds up simple nodes and then semantic analysis kind of makes sure it's all legit. So in um, you can't say three times, quote, parsing. OK, you know, can't multiply numbers times strings, say. So semantic analysis would would do some type analysis and say, oh, those aren't in, those aren't compatible. Now I think I can't remember my basic, but I think uh, I think you can do addition of strings, so it would it would allow that operator, but not the others. And um, you know there may be other kinds of analysis that go on. Um, certainly, when we get to compiling, it, we're going to have some analysis around you know what are the blocks and which ones have to follow each other and things like that. So uh, it, it'll be there. It's not going to be a big phase, but. Um, Conceptually, it kind of takes the tree of nodes and either critiques it or maybe um, annotates it. All right. Um, what I want to do is I'm going to pick on a real language, basically retro basic. So something from OSI or Commodore 64, kind of in that early 1980s era. And um, 
there's manuals for it. So there's a link there to the uh, OSI basic as of September 78, I guess. Now basic, if you haven't used it, um, <laughs> good on you maybe, but uh, there's sort of a standard format. That's like, there's a line number and then a statement. And in this basic, you can have statement, colon, statement, colon, statement, and so on. And then there are a bunch of the statements. There are a bunch of forms. They usually have a keyword rem for remarks. Okay. So there's no slash slash or anything like that. You can print numbers or text. Um, you can do let, or, which is the word itself is optional. You're doing assignment. Um, so let a nine equals two times X plus Y zero. Okay. And you can omit let, um, the variables are only either letters or letters followed by a single digit. Um, and if it's a string, it also has a dollar sign after it. So pretty primitive naming conventions for variables. You've got the, the, uh, famous go-to statement to transfer control. And there's also an if statement that has implicit go-to. You can say if X equals five, then five. Well, that second five is the line number. So that's sort of the same as go to five. And uh, th those um, those statements are enough to write a uh, small programs. Okay, no, we don't have any input yet, but um, you've got sequence based on the line numbers. You've got... Uh, conditional with that m implicit go to if x you know that's the conditional and then with the go to and the implicit go to's you can build up loops all right and if you've run across the sort of theory side of of this in programming if you've got um you know statements sequence loops and conditionals you basically have enough control structures to do whatever you want to do. I mean, lots of everything else is kind of making it nicer, I guess you'd say. Um, so basic has a for next loop that makes things simpler and so on. It doesn't have a whole lot more. Um, let's see. I think I've got that documentation. Let's see. Um, on this side. Okay. So here's a little summary uh, the commands we'll get into later, how do you actually run things, but the statements are all part of basic. So there's RAM. Um, the data stuff lets you define kind of input data in in statements, so it can just kind of read those when you ask for it. Uh, def defines a small function. Uh, and go sub, you have basic simple subroutines. Um, on go sub on go to you can you can go to number one number two number three select a bunch of them uh, print re oh read reads from the data and and whatever else I'm not sure what restore does and I I guess clear I don't think clear got defined in the document but most basic it's clear would return all your variables their initial values um, restore this uh okay there it is oh restores all the data statements so with with data statements you can have data like data one comma two comma three comma four and then when you use the input you read the first time you'll read one then a two then a three then a four if you say restore you go back to the beginning the next read will be one okay you've got pretty full um arithmetic expressions and um you have some logical expressions and then um, let's see uh, these functions for either numbers or strings. All right. Um, I don't think I need all this mechanism kind of for the stuff I want to do. Um, I've got, there's an old book called basic computer games that David all put out in the probably seventies, maybe sixties. I don't know. <laughs> um, probably seventies that uh, has a number of games in it. And I'd like to take some of those and just see if I can implement them. I don't need every single one of these statements to do that. So I may just go to a certain level. Then the compiler side, you know, arithmetic expressions and if and then and, you know, go to, go sub, all those kind of simple, um, how would I say it? The, the kind of... Um, the, the basic control structures that have to be there, you know, 
those I want to definitely compile. But if, you know, if I left off restore or def or something, I don't know. It, I don't need it for every game I want to try. <laughs> Put it that way. Um, let's see. So uh, what I've done so far is I created a brand new project. I didn't, um, I didn't add any code or change anything. I just said create it with tests. And I did put in an icon. So BI, basic interpreter, and BASI is the name of the thing. Or BASI, I don't know. <laughs> I guess I'd spell it differently for BASI, huh? Um, but uh, this is our starting point. All right. And uh, I can run it. Whoops. If I hit the right combination. Okay, so that'll take a moment to start. Uh, while I'm doing that, I guess I'll mention my plan right now is to go, um, well, in my I'm in central time now, so it's 9 to 11.30, eastern time 10 to 12.30, and UTC is five hours ahead, so is it 2 to 4.30 or 3 to 5.30? I get confused. I'll have to figure that out. All right, well, here we go. We I set this up as a Mac application. Um, this is what it does out of the box when you create the project. Uh, let's see, we can see that we got this scene. It has a content view. The content view consists of the text, hello world, with a little bit of padding. And um, that's it. <laughs> okay, so um, what I want to do right now is focus on some of the basic stuff. And uh, not so much worry about how I'm actually going to run it, but just get started on the more interpreter end of things. And um, th that'll that'll keep us going a little bit. Now, what I normally do is I have to do, and basically the to do file, the first line here is uh, in the Chiron on your screen. So I'm hoping you're seeing getting started down there. And if I take that out, line numbers, okay. Um, we want to start somewhere. And I think the simplest statement is REM because basically it, REM is if the line starts with REM or it starts with a number and then REM, the rest of the line is just a comment. And if you run it, it has no impact. Okay. And I think, so we can write a very simple program, right? REM. Hello. <laughs> this is a, this is a remark. Okay. Um, it will get us moving. All right, then I'm going to do print and I'm just going to do print like maybe print number, okay, or print string. And then we'll have to deal with input and output. And then I'm going to work on go to. We can have something that just prints hello, 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 you know, 10 print hello, go to 10. Okay, um, that'll get us. And then if, and then we have everything theoretically we need for at least output only programs. Um, yeah, pretty limited. I've got a runtime system that I developed for some earlier um, transliterations I was doing. So I would translate basic to Swift just kind of by hand and um, then use the runtime system to make that go. And we'll integrate that at some point too. But for now, I just want to get some, some simple stuff going. Um, print, we might go ahead and go do some work on expressions for that. I think that would be um, that would be a, a good early step, at least simple ones. Get started on it. Okay, so uh, take a breath. What are we going to start with? Well, I'm going to start with these tests, and I think that's here. Let's see. Well, I'll just run these for now. I'm not going to mess with the UI tests. Okay, so uh, the default gave us something. You know, we can create setups and teardowns and so on. I don't, we're not going to do a performance test right now. We'll do one before we do the compiler so we can see the benefit of that. Okay. And I haven't done any real Swift for a little bit now. So <laughs> you get to watch me look up stuff all the time. All right. Uh, so let's... Let's just start something simple and then we can 
we can grow this thing or move this thing forward. So I'm just going to start in here. Um, I'm going to assume that your program, let's see, is it, nope, huh. nope, <laughs> it must be control I, okay. Uh, your program is going to come in a string of some sort, okay? And so the uh, let's let's just say let program equal, and we're going to start simple line ten, rem comment. Okay, um, now <laughs> let's cancel this one. I'm not so clear, like, what I'm doing. <laughs> Do I want to run the whole thing? I don't know. This is one where, you know, I had my phases. Let's see, back here. It, it would be progress to me to convert that line into a string of tokens. And then to convert it into a tree of nodes. So... I'm going to start there. I don't know. It, it would also be progress if I took my program text and I ran it, if I did the whole thing. So if you ran this program, the output should be nothing. Maybe we'll start at the high level. Okay. And I don't, I'm making things up, right? So we don't know. Um, We're going to run the program. We have no input at this point. And let's just do an assert equal. Um, output should be empty. All right, I'm going to take out these comments. All right, now I get a message. Hey, you don't have an interpreter. OK, well, that's that's progress. We know we need an interpreter. We'll probably have to do something about the input at some point, but um, let's let's at least build that class. Okay, so um, new file, Swift file, interpreter. Okay. Well, we said it was called run, and it takes a program of type string, and it produces a string. Okay, so we turned some junk. All right, uh, so I think we need to, do we have an import oh we got the testable import okay so we have access to that package good all right so we got a program we invoke our interp or create an interpreter and invoke it with run and check the output that it should be empty because doing a comment only should produce no output okay i'm gonna comment these for now because i just don't remember these names um, and we're going to run it, and we expect to fail. Let me see if I can put this in. Oh, how do you do that? Oh, I never can remember. <laughs> <laughs> no. There we go. <laughs> I'll get there eventually. All right. So my test, it's it's kind of handy to have uh, the test next door to the code we're testing. All right. And uh, whoops. Let's just return nothing. 
All right, we're just getting started. <laughs> okay. Um, so <laughs> now one of these moves you can make in TDD is sort of like backfill the real implementation behind the scenes. And this is where I may be going out a little on a limb for things. Um, but you can get, when you know the shape you want to push things in, you can get there this way. Okay. So, so one thing that happens is, um, oh, how much do I want to do this? Well, we take this program and we, we somehow have to peel off the line number and um, then we deal with the rest of the line. Okay. And actually, the, the interesting thing there is, I guess, hmm, the line takes space, okay, in at least in the interpreted version, um, like somebody could say go to 10 and it would be fine. The other thing is, do I care about the actual contents of that line? I don't think I do. I don't print it or anything like that. Okay, so what we're trying to do then is we want to peel off. Well, I, I think our first stage is we want to, we want to format the line or Hmm. Yeah, it just pushes in so many decisions. That's the hard part for me. So um, one thing I might want is, like, can I interpret this thing line by line? So, I mean, which is sort of the minimal interpreter. And then I just need to, I need to interpret a line, not a program. But my interpreter holds all the state and it knows you know, like it knows what what line it wants to run next and stuff like that. Hmm. All right. And so I have this lexical analysis hanging over my head too. What I would like to do, let's, let's take this as a sort of a boundary on the outside, I guess. I think what I will do, if you want to run a program, you're going to have to parse something hmm. <laughs> all right let's let's build an interpreter test um, new unit test class oh do I have uh, I think I have a package that uh, uh, John Reed put together with test case. Yeah, test suite. I don't know if it... Um, he may have only been for um, iOS. Unit test class. Let's, just, let's see if this one is it. I have this little tool yoink that tries to grab files when I move them. <laughs> okay. Um, let's, let's see. Okay. Here's the test case there. I don't need the interpreter on both sides. Okay. Um, well, this looks like this sort of standard one. That's okay. I think I'm faster just typing it, honestly. Need this. Hmm. 
Hmm. <clears throat> well, I'm doing kind of a glue thing. Oh, boy. All right. Um. I've got the interpreter, it runs. What I wanted to do is do some lexical analysis, do some parsing, do some interpreting. And the return is just, that's the result of that. Um, let's... Hmm. Maybe I'll just jump inside the design I want and then build it back up. That may be a better, better way to go. All right. Um, new file. Let's do scanner tests. Okay, so I mentioned Lexer scanner, lexical analyzer, all kind of the same same thing all right and uh we'll just steal this much okay Lexer. Lexer test close the example close the file okay so uh, what I'm saying is, if you gave me, let's test um, remark. All right. Well, this is this is interesting already. Um, <laughs> okay. So let's start with that same little program. Uh, let line. Well, let's let program equal 10 rem comment okay and the parsing we want to do is we want a stream of tokens to come out of this um and i like i said i don't think we care about the contents of the line so um let lexer equal lexer Let um, tokens equal lexer dot lex of program. Well, again, I'm making decisions. <laughs> Normally, oh boy. Like, do I really want the whole stream of tokens produced at this point? I don't know. Let's, let's, um, Hmm. Let's start there, I guess. <laughs> okay. So somehow, I want to assert that um, tokens is an array and I'm going to say token.line10 and token.remark. All right, so this is what I mean about we got to build up mechanism. So the the lexer is going to produce a stream of tokens, and in this line we're going to ignore the actual comment, but we're going to keep the body and say this thing is a remark. Okay, and uh, that is okay. Then I assumed there's something called token that um, that this thing can find. All right, lexer can find. So I've I've implicitly created two classes. So let's let's go ahead and actually create them. All right. So Swift file. This is Lexer. Okay. And uh, Lexer. And right now it's got a func lex, which takes a program, which is a string. And it produces a stream. Well, hmm. I, 
I said array of token. Okay. Uh, golly. Yeah, that's true. Token's not in scope yet. Okay. And let's make another class. And this one token will be we'll use an enum, I think. Is is a common way, even in the old C programs would do this kind of thing. But here's the enum token, okay. And I think do I say case? Um we said we had a line which takes an int and a remark which takes nothing. Okay. Expect identifier after comma in case declaration. You know, I had uh, looked this up this morning. <laughs> Didn't stick. Okay. Oh, no commas. Okay. Only commas in the same. We want the ones that have associated values. So, yeah, we can put them in, and we just don't need commas. Okay, but associated value says you're defining these enum types, but you can give them additional information. And in our case, the line number is an int, and the the remark has nothing we care about, so we don't need anything for that. And I just take out the token. Okay, now, um, good. Let's see if this thing is happier. Okay, well... Um, where's our test? Lexer test. Oh, I called it scanner tests and the class Lexer. So let's rename this. Good. All right. Let's see how it goes. <laughs> Should fail, right? I know. I don't know what the complaint is there. Oh, token must conform to equatable. Okay. Um, token. Where did it go? File.swift, oh boy. All right. Uh, we want token to conform to equatable. All right. And, oh. Uh, I'm always forgetting how to do these things. Um, can I say extension token? Yeah, I can put this down here. Let's see, do we have... Well, I don't want the language reference, I want the library reference. Protocols, we talked about this somewhere. There it is. Oh, okay, well, let's see if the synthesized implementation takes care of it. <laughs> um. We're on our test again. Now we still expect it to fail. Okay, good. Blank is not equal to token 10 and token remark. Okay. <sighs> um.
All right. Let's 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 just deal with. We're gonna lex this line of code. So the the lexer. Well, in in basically the lexer looks for characters that go together, and so ten is a valid integer, or yeah, valid integer, and um, we. But the trickiness is, well, we aren't we aren't there. Okay, maybe maybe it's not significant yet. Well, it is a little. Um, Ten, the space should be ignored, and then we look for the ramp. Okay. Um, now, the other thing here is the the decision this thing embody well maybe i should just get it passing i don't know maybe that's more important at this point okay um i'm moderately confident that i can parse the line number off the front but this thing of lex and returning the tokens i don't think that's the interface i want so um sometimes it's just what are you doing over there okay um it's writing the test out reveals to you like that's not really what i want to do i think what i want to do is say i'm going to give you the program and you're going to hold it and then i'm going to say next and what i'm going to get from that is a token And I'm, let's see, is that going to, hmm, okay, and well, let's do it this way. And let's make sure token one is equal to token line 10. And let's make sure token two is equal to token dot remark. Okay. This violates the way we set it up. That's old. Okay. So now I'm I'm changing the rules a little. Okay. So I'm saying, you know, the interface I really want is I want to be more like a stream. And maybe I should be conforming to a stream. Hmm. But I want to be able to call next and get the next token. And I'm going to repeat that process. My parser will call next whenever it's ready for another token. Okay, so I think this is a better interface for it. All right, so let's make the initializer. Um, it takes this. Now it does nothing. Okay. Um, there is no lex anymore. There is a next. And next returns a token not an array of tokens now for me um, writing writing stuff it would be nice I mean my test it would be nice to let them take an array of tokens but um, I'm not there okay let's let's get this doing something first okay um, and I'm gonna add something now token dot error so I need a new token type, and this is error. And this just said something went wrong, okay? Um, eventually it'll probably have a string. Maybe I should just give that now. Okay. Um, so token.error and um, not yet implemented. I don't, I don't really care about it. Okay. Now, 
Let's try this again. We still expect it to fail. <laughs> Okay, and it probably failed because they both came back with errors, right? Error is not equal to 10, good. And error is not equal to remark. All right, well, uh, normally we take a break, you know, kind of every 35, 40 minutes. So um, let's take a break and then come back and make this thing pass, get, get moving forward anyway. All right, I'll see you in like three minutes. Hi, welcome back. All right, so we left off. We had a couple failures. Uh, we don't really do anything yet, so of course they fail. All right, so now we want to basically go through, and we're presented with several cases. Like the character could be a digit, it could be a letter, it could be other things. Um, and we want to, based on that, start peeling off stuff. So the front of a line, uh, this. Basic is very old as far as these go, so it doesn't have as clean of a syntactic model or a lexical model as a lot of languages do these days. Um, but well, we'll we'll muddle through. So somehow we have to know. Well, let's let's start with the digits. Okay, <laughs> so we're gonna have to save our our string. I don't think. We don't have a lot of helpful, yeah. Okay, uh, let's, we'll make a let program of string and self dot program equals program. Okay, so now we have the characters that we came in, okay. And the next thing we're gonna need is the let's just say index um, equals zero. Okay, so I want to keep track of the next character to look at and basically we're going to bump index as we go. Okay, um, so to to get the next token let's let's just take the case of that integer first okay and i think we'll get we'll get fancier okay but if um well let's let's switch um program can i do sub index i don't know of Again, constantly having to look up syntax. Oh, yeah, there's none. Okay, so program sub index is not being liked. Um, let's try this program dot. I don't know, I'm after the remove. I'm after anything that returns a character because <laughs> I want the first character of the string. And string is a complicated concept in, in iOS, you know, or Mac OS too. Um, okay, and so as usual, switch. Uh, Swift get character at index. I mean, it's always in well, subscript. Okay, it is trickier. Okay, um, input sub index input dot start index. <coughs> <clears throat> Excuse me. I mean that looks looks handy enough. Let's let's drop this in and use it. 
Okay, so I'll just put it in here. And is that enough to make it go? Okay, cool. All right. So if um, at least one case, yes. Okay. Uh, so the, the first case we want, let's just open. I don't think I need that. Okay. Um, this is case, uh, can I say, I don't think the characters are like this, are they? Nine. Okay. You're going to like that. <laughs> Yeah. Oh, maybe. Okay. Um, all right. So th I think what I want to do is just, if I see an opening digit, I'm going to gather the digits. Okay. So, um, uh, and gather is, uh, will c capture a start index is index. And then um, while um, program sub index in, can I say that? Zero dot dot nine. Okay. Um, I'm going to bump my index. Okay, so that's not happy. Let's do this. I don't know if it's going to like these ranges. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, I can I can list them. It's the old thing of get something done and then clean it up. Okay. Um, and so we also need a default. And let's just do this token.error thing here. Okay, since that covers the whole switch, I think that should be okay. This notation, see, I can't use, there's an is digit, but I think it allows like any kind of stuff. <laughs> um, how about greater or equal to zero? Can I do that? And program sub index less than or equal to nine. And I don't think I need this opening brand. So, um, so I've got index, start index set and end index set, and I've got to return something that's like program dot, is there a substring? within a given range. Oh. Um. See, I, I'm, <laughs> um, so we have to get substring oh there is a version that takes that okay oh no apparently there isn't range of String dot index. Is 
Let's turn next to range at lower bound. Okay, there's distance from. Index of the character, no. Substring. I guess this is it. Start index to end index. Okay. Um, yeah, so let's take program sub start index up to, but not including index. Okay. And the reason it's not including is we, we incremented index while it was in range, but the last on the last digit, it's incremented and now it's out of range. So we know we don't want it. Okay. Now, oh really? I thought it would recognize. Oh, sorry. This is program. Let's let um, equal that. Okay, and now we have the string of the contents. Really? Subscript is unavailable. Use a string that index range instead. Okay, we'll we'll come back. <laughs> Let's get our token out of here. For token dot line of int with value. Okay. Now Um, we've established that we really have one, so there is at least one digit, so I'm going to just say it's okay. Um, program, apparently, they may have changed some string stuff. Or maybe I have to convert this to an index. String dot start index if I overlapped a I think I have how about starting? Okay, this should be a simpler <laughs> subscript cannot okay, so this is Well, can I get a range? I'm pretty sure I can uh, access it with that. Dot dot less creates a range. Range of bound, bound is comparable. Hmm. Okay, maybe my query wasn't so good on this one. How does substring work on Swift? Substring with range. Okay, but that doesn't work. Okay. Can use subscript. Okay, I got to get the index. Okay, let's try that. Index is string dot index. Oh. <laughs> well, I can tell I have not been at a keyboard for a few weeks. Let me tell you. <laughs> okay. All right, so the index, um, well, let's, let 
let's string index equal program dot start index oh, str dot index index of program dot start index index start index offset by and I think offset by is our index well I'm gonna okay that's still not happy subscript Use a string dot index range instead. Let's do steer index. I'm doing this the hard way. That's clear. Okay. Um, well, let's see. So this is the current index. So let's let this be starting index. Okay. Um, I've taken a very big bite for this first test, haven't I? All right, let's see if I believe it. <laughs> okay, you get the starting index based on the current index, which we know is a digit. Then you bump up the index while you've still got characters that are digits. And then at the end, let's call this ending index. Um, at the end, you capture the index you're at and then pull those. Okay, so I'm hoping this passes. <laughs> it took too long to get here. Yeah, so much for that. Oh, only hope the first one passes. Yay. Okay, that's actually uh, kind of what I want. We only did the parsing of the line number here. Okay, so um, what what we do, we keep an invariant that says this index is always the next character to look at. Okay, and then um, that way when we come back in, if if the starting index, if the index pointed to, well, in this case, it's going to point to a space. So we're going to have to deal with some of that. But if it if it pointed to R at that point, um, then we would. Well, if it pointed to R E M, we we've got to find the verb. Okay, um, and it's it's. It basically a starts with in this case. So if the current string starts with REM, then uh, we're okay, and we can we can parse it. Okay, um, up to the end of the line or the end of the string. Okay, and we haven't dealt with ends of things yet. Okay, so in a way, I kind of cheated. Well, this is a pretty simple line, but. I'm kind of like cheated in the sense that I like got this first test case working or the first test assertion. Now I want to do the next one. Okay, so the the thing I want to do here is I've got to deal with these spaces now. So um, we're going to generalize a little bit that says case space. Okay. Um, if 
um, you see a space, then all we want to do is increment our index. One. Okay. And break. Okay, so we're not trying to return any tokens. We're just trying to skip over it. And that tells me um, I'm going to put this in a loop. Is that right? Okay. So I think what happened here is we came in next. The, the prefix, when we parse the 10, we, our next index was now 0, 1, 2 pointing at a space that came into the error token not yet implemented, and um, we we have to deal with it. Okay, so what I'm what I'm saying I'm going to do is I'm going to have cases where uh, I want to ignore spaces. Well, maybe maybe a better way. Let's do let's just do it at the front. Okay, let's just say when you come in here, if you're looking at spaces. Life isn't good. You you aren't anywhere yet. Okay, so while program sub index is a space, um, then you're going to increment past it. Okay, so let's get past that starting problem. Okay, so we come in with space rem, and the well the first time we came in with just ten, program index was not a space. We'd go down and do it. Now we're coming in with a space. We'll skip over the spaces. Let's go ahead and do that just to prove that out. Um, and then we come in here and we're going to still get this default error return, which is okay. We, we've, we've gotten something better. Okay. Um, now um how do i write a switch statement with all the letters my goodness okay uh swift swift switch statement uh letter range i probably should have figured that one out before huh Yeah, I know I can list them out. <laughs> yeah, that wasn't much help. Switch to both range. Let's try it differently. Let's try Swift character range. Ranges and strings, okay. Yeah, this is it. The character, not every character is the same size, so that's why you end up with this kind of craziness. Um, hmm, can I make a range? Okay, range. I want to go the other way. I want to make a range. Working with characters, yes. Character in. Okay. Yeah, and there's why, right? <laughs> we like our we like our little special characters. But uh emojis and stuff. But they don't fit in one one byte or one sixteen bit sixteen bit. A 
I really don't want to list all these out, you know? I'm still not getting what I want. Range of character. Swift 3.0. Range of character from character sets. That's not bad. Okay, let's see what this is doing. Oh, yeah, that's killer. <laughs> I don't see what they left out, but they left out something. A, B, C, D, F, G, H, I, J, K, L, L, P, Q, R, S, T, U, V, W, X, Y, Z, Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. I don't know. Wow. Whatever there is, it's hard. It is he is closed, but not countable. Represents all strings. Uh, okay. No, 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 that's ugly. <laughs> Is Unicode scalar dot value? I mean, realistically, the old basics, they were fine with UN dates, but... Um, Can I do that? Is that string? String of that? That's not quite what we want. It's not horrible. Boy. Okay. Um. I can't have an array of values to match to here, unfortunately. <sighs> okay, let's try another another way. Okay, so let's try Swift 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 switch statement. Um. Good, is it? Okay, 
this is trying to be promising. Well, again, I'm tempted to just list the letters and be done with it. Fall through with range. <sighs> Let's see. Um, hmm. Yeah, let's do that. And we're just going to do uppers for the moment. Okay, if you get a letter, what do we do? Well, it's going to be very similar. And we probably should be able to define something. Okay. So what we're going to do is we're going to try and pull the biggest stream of letters that we can get. And see where we go. Um, so we're going to do the same kind of thing as we did here. Kind of grab, snag the starting index. Then we're going to do a loop. And the ending index, well, let's just take it all. Okay, while it's greater than or equal to A and it's less than or equal to Z. Index is one, okay. Um, value is that, and then the token. Okay. At this point, we've got the value is a string. Um, can I option click it? Value is a substring, okay, that's, that's fine. Um, almost a string. All right. But uh, we, what we care about is if value starts with um, RAM, then we're going to do something. And we're going to return token.ram remark. Okay, otherwise, um, let's just say unrecognized name, because we don't deal with it yet. Okay, um, token.error, unrecognized name. Okay, so um, we're snagging the starting index. We're pulling in all the letters. 
and we're stopping at the ending index and pulling out the value. If it starts with rem, it's a remark. Otherwise, it's an unrecognized name and go. Okay. And I believe it should pass for all that flopping around on how to do it. Um, it I have to say, it in C, working with simple one byte characters, the switch statement was very, um, it, it gave you a very performant implementation because it could just build a big, you know, a big array indexed by character and jump to that bit of code based on, based on the character. This one, I suspect it's not as performant. <laughs> um, certainly it's got more options, right? Because this list of Unicode characters, right? I mean, there's, they ran out of 16 digit or 16 bit ones. So there's, you know, more than 65,000 at this point. And uh, you're not going to build a table of, you know, 2 million possible single characters for this. So I suspect the implementation is, is not really um, that, that helpful. Okay. But uh, it passed. Okay. We're long overdue for a check-in. All right. So uh, we add support for Lexer handling, handling initial line number and remark statements we'll push and commit oh and i really should run all my tests okay now it's time to clean up <sighs> okay um well one thing is we certainly see um, duplication because we just copied and pasted a bunch of stuff. Okay, now this. Hmm. There's. There's still something we haven't worried about, and that's this notion of end of file or even end of line. And um, in in this return here, I mean, we're basically just throwing out the rest of the program, right? We just we just look for rem. Okay, what we really should do is is read forward until either the end of the line or the end of the string. Okay. And that's, well, we, we have pieces of things here. So I think what we're going to do probably the rest of the hour is refactor this thing. <laughs> okay. Um, one thing is we've got this little loop that given a condition, um, can increment it. I mean, hmm. Maybe maybe it's okay that it knows the index even. Okay. Um and we've also, you know, so this this chunk is kind of common. This chunk is sort of common, at least up to here, where we dig out the string that's matched. Okay, so let's see. And this is kind of the same thing. I mean, maybe maybe what we should do is switch to these subsets of characters. Maybe I shouldn't even be using switch. Okay, so let's let's see. What's a good way to do this? Okay, one thing is let's let's get some duplication out. And I think. I think this, if this were, a, whoops, if the inside here were a parameter, or maybe, maybe it's not even that. Maybe, maybe let's switch this to work with character sets. Okay. Um, 
let's let let digits equal and we saw how to do this at some point okay so I know it can be done Swift set of characters I think even in character sets in Swift okay yeah and that's one way to get them okay let's let's take this for now there's other ways to do it though oh well this could be a very function symbols yeah I don't think I, I feel like I know I've run across it before. I feel like these these sets contain stuff you wouldn't expect. Alphanumerics, capitalized letters. Yeah, L M N. See, they're going to carry. They're going to take any any language sets and stuff like that. Um. Yeah, letters is allowing too much. New lines, I mean, there's like 17 kinds of new lines, right? <laughs> White space and new lines. Ugh. Okay, init characters in, init range. Okay, I think we should figure this one out. range. Do we have an example? Hmm. Oh, this is NS character set. I think, I don't think that's the right one, is it? Let's just find a Swift character set. Okay, good guess. Is the character set done in it? Okay, let's let's use that. That's a step forward. <laughs> uh, character set dot init. Sorry, did they use characters in? Yeah, okay. Okay, there are those digits. Okay. Um, no, did. Don't like that. Characters in. Character set. Characters in range. Parameter data, the bitmap represents. No, characters, characters in the given range. In it. Characters in. Let's make sure I spelled it right. Oh, how about a colon? Okay, how about we take out the word init? Okay. Um, let's 
Strings contain any of the characters. If I want to ask the other way around, I think I can. Well, let's see. Let's try digits. Dot. Contains. Member. Okay. Digit.contains program sub index. Okay. Character type expected argument type unicode.scalar. I suspect there's a way to get a Unicode scaler out of a string, right? Okay. Um, maybe our index at was just not the right thing. helpful as I would hope. And then maybe we just have to do this one. Unicode scalers. <laughs> okay, well, digits contains programs of index. Okay, let's let's try working with Unicode scalers and see the consequences of that. All right, let me undo this one. Okay, and make sure this still works. Ignore the warning. Okay. So, let's keep that gonna work you could scale her for you oh boy <laughs> Okay, apparently that is more like an array. Okay, let's try this. Unicode. 
code scaler. Okay, now these are all Unicode scalers. Are they going to match up on the case statement? Unicode scaler view to Unicode scaler. I don't know. It's feeling like a dead end, isn't it? Okay. So the problem is character set is not really a character set per se. Unicode scalers. All right. Okay. <laughs> um, I got to make something, some progress somewhere here. All right. This chunk is, is a thing down to the value, but it has to be based on ranges. Maybe that's okay. Let's, let's start there. Um, this, let's extract a method. Thank you. Starting index digits. Well, let's, let's copy it. Okay. So this is, um, match while. low character high character returns a string and looks like this okay so um, I'm okay with index mutating in this okay and let's return the value okay missing return in instant method cannot convert return value uh, do I want to do that let's do that okay so according to that, I should be able to replace this with, let, 
let value equals match while zero nine. Okay, so less greater than equal to zero, less than equal to nine. We're not even using that there. This should pass. Okay, let's take this much out. I'm going to keep this character set thing around for a minute because I just don't know. It might be okay. Okay. Um, let's drop it in my to-do. It's just sort of one of these things. All right. Now, Lexer... Okay, that's that's much more what I'm talking about. That All right. So so that digs out the range of characters that matches digits and converts it into the appropriate token. Now this one, oh, let's make it use its thing now. We're going to take this out because we're not using it. Okay, greater than or equal to low and less than or equal to high. Okay, should still pass. Good. All right, and now I should be able to do the same thing here. I should be able to say let value equals match while going from A to Z. This should pass. Okay. Delete that. Now we have a little more work because the names required, you know, is it a reserved word and stuff like that. Okay, value starts with rim, return token to mark. Okay, if it doesn't start with rim, we don't know what's going on. Okay, this should still pass. These should all pass. Okay, and we extracted match while to pull out strings. Okay, I don't know if I'm I may be needing conversions or something, but okay, this is a start. All right, so we've got three things done. Let's let's mark something to do here. So line numbers, I think we've we've started the process. Well, we're not really done. Done. All right, let's let's get more interesting cases. Whoops, of Lexer and the Lexer test. Okay, now. I'm going to make up. Whoa, what do I want to do? Let, let's pull out. Let's let's make um, line number. OK, and let's just do the first token. Okay, now I think we can do variations. Okay, um, do I want a little helper method? Well, let's write the next one. I want parameterized tests, and I started doing a package for this, and I don't know if it's a distraction, but maybe I should be bringing that back in. I, I got to get through a step on this. Okay, so 
let's let's test a um, leading spaces. Okay, and let's um, function check line number. Okay, and what it's going to do is um, expected value of an integer. Okay, and it's going to do this stuff. I guess it needs the program too. Okay, so if you give it program, I'm going to do this and I'm going to call check line number program 10. Okay, should still pass. Okay, um, let's make sure we use the expected value here. Okay, let's line number leading spaces. All right, so um, let's just call check line number. The program is 10. And we expect 10. Let's just use that variety and make sure everything's okay. Can you inline this for me? Oh, so lazy. All right. Okay, so our, our leading space thing is working. That's good. All right, now uh, internal spaces. I think it's horrible style, but the fact is that, let's do that, is legal okay um i mean you gotta admit that's pretty horrible let's just run the class and it'll pick up everything it probably comes back with a one right yeah okay oy, oy, oy. Now there's there's multiple ways to handle this, and so that's why I'm pausing here. All right, uh, one way is we know we started down the path, and we've at least got the front of a valid line number. All right, um, what we could do is skip spaces, and if basically. If it's not in this range we said, but it equals a space, then skip it and go back and repeat. Um, that might be okay. The other way is before things get going, you smush them and get rid of all spaces. Um, the nice thing there is it does eliminate this little chunk here that's sort of a distraction um, um what's the right way the tricky thing is if I squeeze all those spaces out if I have strings with quoted you know quoted values um, then those get squeezed out too and that's clearly wrong so that means I have to be doing a context sensitive squeeze, <laughs> um, which maybe I'm buying trouble, but we could probably 
do that. I mean, you could start squeezing and you keep track of whether you have quotes or not and, and so on. Oh, we haven't dealt with strings at all yet, so it's okay, but... Uh, Hmm. I'm not sure. I mean, if Matchwall's doing this nice little job of stuff for us, that's kind of nice. All right, let's let's put it in somewhere. <laughs> um. All right. So I think what we have to do is this code all right let's let's extract that extract to method and let's just call this skip spaces okay um now in here How do I go back? Hmm. You know, I'm almost leaning the other way now. Because in here, I've matched something. I've sort of assumed I can take the range of text. Hmm. Maybe this needs to be squeeze spaces. Okay. Given Okay, given this situation, I'm saying I will never see a space. And this right now just squeezes them on the front. Okay, we saw something like that. Uh, Swift string remove all spaces. Not trim. Always a brick. Yeah, okay. Um. Can I do this? String replacing occurrences of? Let's try it. Um, we're going to change the way we're squeezing right now. So we're going to say program dot replacing occurrences. Every space gets changed into a nothing. doesn't look that huh? of with it's on space Well, we're going to move this up, I guess. So top program equals program replacing spaces with nothing. Okay, so we're doing this at the beginning and taking this out. Okay, so I'm 
changing the way this goes. And I think for now, that's acceptable. We're not dealing with quotes yet, so if we ever add quotes to our language, we'll do it. Okay, so that's, that's something. Okay, so we squeeze out the spaces. We have a match while. Okay, match while, match while starts. All right, um, that's not bad. It's not great. There's, there, I'm still not getting something quite right, but that's okay. Uh, squeeze spaces before lexing. Okay, and we've gone a while, so let's take another break. Again, just uh, two or three minutes, and uh, we'll come back and continue on this. All right, see you in a few. Hi, welcome back. All right, so we've dealt with line numbers, and we've dealt with, at least for now, the squeezing of characters. So let's record that. Okay, so just line numbers... Okay, uh, squeezing characters before lexing. And now we're into statements and we're working on rem. Okay, and I don't think we need to worry about the spaces within things we we know we squeeze them all out so let's let's deal with this one um uh, sorry let's take off the line number here and let's just work on the token itself okay and i'm not going to worry about the space here it's well can't happen right so oh no it can it'll get squeezed we're good all right but i'm only going to look at the first token and I'm only going to look for the remark. Okay. So this test is simpler, but it should still pass. If I see rem comment, I should say that's the remark. Now let's get nastier. Okay. Um, test remark and a file. All right. Um, well, Interesting. That that brings up another token. Let's let's deal with that one. Okay, so the the next token we've ignored. I mean, maybe we didn't we didn't talk about it anyway. <laughs> you may have been swearing at your system, going like, "Why aren't you doing this?" All right, but I want to add the notion of an end of file token, and the reason is. Um, it's a pain if I have to go around checking every string. Are you the end of the, the, end of the string and so on? So, um, I don't know. End of file is kind of a traditional name. They're in files, but um, let's just call it n at end. Okay. And what I want to do is let's do an empty program. Okay, and we're going to do the Lexer stuff again, as usual. Let Lexer equal program. Okay, token is Lexer next. Token should be at end. Okay, so I'm making up a new token. All right, let's run this one. Okay, so if you if you come to a, an end of a program, yeah, boom. <laughs> okay, so where are we dying? Well, you came in here and oh, we're probably 
<clears throat> excuse me, program some index, right away you try and and do that, okay? But index is out of range, okay? So if index is greater than program.length count, um, well, then we have this special case. We have to return at end. I think we can say dot at end. Okay, since we're all tokens here, using tokens. Uh, whoops, capital E. Okay, I hope that finds it. Okay, string index out of bounds. Okay, so we're doing this check before we go grabbing characters. Now I'm puzzled. Test at end, elixir dot next. Hmm. Program dot count is that? Oh, okay, wait a minute. If index should be greater or equal, I think. We start at zero. If it's it's not going to be greater than the program count at that point, but we can't access index sub zero. So if it's greater or equal to. So if it's the program count is zero and the index is zero, we got a problem. If index is one, two, or three, we've gone way too far somehow. But uh, if the program count is five and we're at five, well, we already used zero, one, two, three, four, so we are stuck again. All right. Good catch, little test. Okay. Uh, so added token dot at end. Okay, and then let's get that on to do. Okay, so line number squeezing before lexing. End of program. Okay, token dot add end. Yeah. Um, now let's go back to RAM. <laughs> okay, so RAM. I don't trust it. Well, no. Yeah, I don't trust it. <laughs> okay. I'm going to write a test that I'm pretty sure is going to pass. Although, let's. Maybe this should be token. Yeah, let's let's change this. Let's make this a token. Um, this is token dot line 10. Check token. Okay, we're getting closer to a uh, parameterized zero line check line number. Okay, that's valid. Okay. Um, these need token dot line. Okay, those should still be good. Okay. Um, Let's just call this token. All right, now this becomes check token. Rem comment with token dot remark. This goes away.
Okay. Now, REM is okay as far as it goes. All right, yeah, the problem I have is we let's let's test two remarks. Show instead of tell, right? Okay, so if we have check token Well, I can't use check token for this. <laughs> okay, let's pull this down again. Okay, I find my program is um, 10 rem twenty rem. The token should be well. The token should be a line number. I don't want to do this. How do I want to do this? I don't want a line number, a line token, I don't think. I think a line number kind of represents that. Okay, so lexer.next, token should be token line 10. I'll get the test out and then we'll work on it. <laughs> okay, so the tokens I expect are 10 rem, 20 rem, add end of file. So I need one more. Okay, so 10. Uh, let's just do bar. And you can see why I want to find a better way to express this. Okay, so I should see token line, I should see token remark, I should see line 20, I should see remark, and I should see add end. Okay, and this test is going to fail. Okay, so it found line 10, it found the remark, and then the rem just said, delete the rest of the string, okay, which is not good. <laughs> okay, um, and then line 20 was already gone, no chance of finding it. Okay, so the thing I propose to do, okay, one thing is rem is only going to read forward until it hits a new line. All right, but that'll work for the first one, but it won't work for the second one. So if I do that, then I'll see these four work, but the last one still blows up uh, when I try and read the rest or whatever. So let's make that work. Okay, so I'm going to say there's no harm in putting a new line at the end of my file. I'm going to ignore new lines. Okay, so uh, let's... Uh, program let's do program plus new line replacing this with that okay so um, that well maybe I should go the other way around plus new line Okay, so I'm guaranteed to end in a new line. If I ever come in here and it's equal to a new line, um, let 
Let's see. I don't have to worry about index program dot count at this point. Do I? Okay, if I come in and there's a new line. Hmm. Well, I want to do the simple thing for now. I'm going to put it here. Okay. If you hit a new line, let's see, are we at this point? We're going to hit a new line because we put one in at the, at the back. Okay. If you hit the new line, I'm, I'm going to, I'm going to hate this. <laughs> okay. What I'm going to do is I'm going to skip past it and I'm going to return next. Okay, now I got to convince myself that this will terminate, right? So I'm calling recursively. And like I say, it's probably a little ugly. Okay, so if I, let's just take that last new line. If I'm index e plus equals one, um, I ate, let's say it started out empty. So we have one character index starts zero. It's not at, the, it's not at program end. It's at new line. I say index plus equals one. Now I'm at one return next. It comes through here and says, Oh, it must be at end. Okay. So the, the tail piece works. If I have a new line in the middle, then I got to, I'm going to skip forward to it, handle it. And maybe it's new line. And then another line number is normal case. Um, it will match it and find it. If it had two new lines, it would get depth of two. So the, Depth of the recursion is going to be the number of consecutive new lines. I don't expect any, um, but if I had them, you know, 10 deep is not terrible. A million deep is a problem, but I don't think we're going to worry about that. Okay, so this should still pass uh, the first two. Okay, and the problem is... What? If value starts with token, return token remark. Oh, let's, let's, huh. I was worried about a different problem, but all right, let's, let's do this. How are you passing? <laughs> um, value starts. Oh, value is only the matching letters. Okay, I'm doing the wrong. Let's do that. Okay, I feel better. <laughs> Uh, the tests really do help. Okay. So the problem is we've matched any letters. We start with N, rem, but we need to we need to keep bumping our index forward until we until we see a new line. Okay, because a rem is supposed to go to the end of its line. All right. So now we don't pick up the pound sign. The space X space got eliminated. X got is alphanumeric. And so it's fine. If I did lowercase X, it should fail. Make sure I understand what I'm doing. Yep. Okay. So I'll just do that to be sure. All right. So now, um, I'm going to skip forward. Okay. Um, and this is, it's kind of like this. 
it, it's really ignore until. Okay, so let's let's write it in line, but then we'll extract it. Okay, but uh, but this thing is going to be ignore until. Okay, so um, we know we're not at a new new line, or we could be at a new line, but we know the character next character is valid because we only pulled alpha stuff and we are either a new line or a, another kind of character okay so i don't mind accessing the character so i'm going to do the while kind of thing okay um so i'm kind of doing this but the condition is while well, program sub index is not equal to new line so we're bumping indexes up until we equal a new line. And then we come out and we're at that character, new line character. We could bump it again, okay, just to consume the new line, which I think is reasonable for us. No, maybe it's not. Maybe it's more of a separator. Okay, so I'm saying the new rem goes until the end of the line, and then we'll let the normal line ending mechanism deal with it. Okay, um, let's make sure if this works. And I still don't know the at end. Do we have that straightened out? We should. Okay, yeah. Um, cool. All right, so now I'm going to extract this. Ignore until. Okay, I'm going to add a parameter. Um, expected? No, what will we call this? Um, I guess it is expected. His character. And we're going to look for it. Okay, make sure that still works. Oh, I didn't call. It. Oh, there it is. Okay. Ignore until new line. And let's just run all these tests. Okay, so now we handle handle new line between statements and remark only um goes to end of line. Okay. And I think that covers this one. Okay, I don't think I have any more tests I want to write there. Elixir tests. Okay. All right, let's read through our tests and see how we feel about them. All right, so check token. There's still room for parameterized tests. So let's let's make this a kind of a questions. Usually I put the stuff we're immediately doing, and then if there's stuff I think about, um, all right, so we'll want to look at that. I don't know, like, if I got it four times in a row, you'd think that'd be enough to make me go, hey, maybe it's already there. Um, all right, so we got a check token method. We got a case of a normal line number, leading spaces, internal spaces. Okay, we check remark this. Good, I think. 
Yeah, we probably could have um, probably could have checked checked that earlier, maybe. I mean, because this is a remark token followed by an at end token, but we did check the at end now, so that's okay. Um, all right, the two remarks. This one. Um, I wonder if there's a way to Let, let's ask, let's raise a question. Should Lexer be a stream or stream like thing? Okay. Because if it were like there are stream functions that can read all the values from a stream and turn them into an array and we could simplify this test with that but that's that's not bad all right this one we didn't end up using i think it's okay to leave it there for now interpreter and run and so far an empty program is doing nothing all right and let's look at our code Well, we had these two cases we didn't really check. Let's let's do those. These are Lexer. So um, the case, and I'm going to move this one up because it's sort of the empty case or something. OK, but I'm going to put one that's funk. Um, test unexpected command statement. Well, no, I can just do check token. Check token. If I give it line 10, what? Um, maybe it's just the what. Let's just deal with that. OK. Then I expect token dot error. And the string is like unexpected name, I think. Okay, and if I test unexpected characters, uh, check token, um, I'd really like to get a smiley face in there. Okay, I look. Oh. Okay. Yeah, that's a good choice. Okay, token dot error not yet implemented. Okay. I think these two should be right. Barring syntax errors, which I apparently have. Check token. Apparently. Editor plays order in source file. Okay, I think you're behind the times here. want the line number because we don't want to deal with it. All 
All right. I think that's a good place to stop. So uh, we uh, check error handling for names and unknown tokens. Okay. Um, okay, so we will stop there. Uh, let's see, we should look at the Lexer before we go. I don't think I don't think I'm changing my opinions on anything here too much. Um, I think the notion of a match while is good. This thing is uh, it's a little awkward. And partly it's just that program index stuff. Maybe we should, uh, let's see, how about should Lexer work with array of character instead? That might be a better choice. Okay, again, we can pull that out of the beginning and go from there. So um, I think that would simplify the ranges and all that stuff. Okay, ignore until we check for end, we check for new line. We use the ignore until this is still awkward but that's not bad okay so i think we've made a dent or at least a, a starting dent in things um it would be nice if the interpreter would would at least try the lexer and maybe do something with it i don't know maybe maybe that's where we go next is let's let's get the empty you know a uh, run a rem only program. Okay, so we'll push the parsing a little more and push the runtime a little more and uh, pick up there next time. So my goal at this point is to do this weekdays same time, uh, which is 9 to 11.30 a.m. Central or 10 to 12.30 Eastern and so on. Um, do this daily Monday through Friday. There's going to be days I'm just busy on a, on a given day and I'll have to cut out because five days a week is a lot but uh um i think we made a dent today and we'll pick up there tomorrow and my hope is by the end of tomorrow we'll have a trivial but running program so thanks for joining me and i will catch you in the future bye bye